empathy, clarity, creativity. Three words that are important for design, important for health, important for me, and important for you. I would like to invite you into my world, the world of design. And I am a designer. Yes, you can tell that because I am wearing the uniform. <laughs> a haircut that looks like you've stuck your finger in a plug socket and trousers that look like they're permanently falling down. <laughs> I've wanted to be a designer since I was 14. And yes, that is me on screen, doing design. Design isn't just about drawing pretty pictures. It's not just about working with crayons. It's about this, talking to people, understanding their needs, perspectives, aspirations, and frustrations. So this is the kind of design I want to talk about today. There are many types of design, and we embrace them all. But this kind of design, where it looks like I'm holding a gun, not a video, uh, not a video camera, it is actually a video camera, I'm gently encouraging Fiona, the lady in the wheelchair, to give us insights. I'm gently shadowing her, listening her, talking to her. And this is what design is. And you and I have more in common than you may think. We are all designers. And I'm going to say that again. We are all designers. And I'm going to prove it to you. You all design your lives. You designed your journeys here. You designed your breakfast this morning. And you designed your outfits. Take a look around you. None of you are wearing the same thing. Celebrate your creativity and the fact that none of you are wearing these trousers. These are mine. <laughs> There's a lot of jargon that I hate. Things like the word user or consumer. We use that a lot. I don't think in human history anyone has ever stood up and said, I'm Rama. I'm a user of sliced bread. <laughs> or, I'm Rama. I'm a consumer of beer and Bollywood. We just don't introduce ourselves as that. I like to talk about people. Users use, consumers consume, but people live. And we need to see people in the full dimensions of their lived life, with all their contradictions and complexities. People are the most innovative part of design. Design is the most innovative part of creativity. And creativity is absolutely essential for healthcare. So I'm going to start off by talking about creativity. I start off with a project we were looking at to redesign the emergency ambulance. And our most creative moment was when we seconded a paramedic called Dixie Dean, that's a real name, to the design team. And she brought a project back to, to life many times. I had a brilliant idea. And it was this, side-loading ambulance. Fantastic. That sounds great, doesn't it? Why do we throw people in the back like a piece of meat? Dixie took us out for a drive. And in London, as in most major cities, there's not that much space at the side of the ambulance to load, load someone, load a patient. There's street clutter, onlookers, dogs, cats, rubbish, parked cars. But the back of the ambulance, if it's driven there, is typically free. Another challenge we had was how do we restock the ambulance in five minutes instead of 45 minutes? And this is how we did it. We removed the wardrobes that you typically see in an ambulance um, with all the clutter that's inside and replaced it with treatment packs, five treatment packs. At the end of the shift, you take the old ones out, put the new ones in, five minutes to four, sorry, 45 minutes to five minutes. This not only reduced weight, it reduced fuel consumption, and it increased the space, creating a better working environment for the paramedics. There's a number of things one can say about creativity and design. But when I think of the caring nature of healthcare professionals and pairing the two together, I'm brought to empathy, and sometimes, literally, 
only empathy saves the day. Last year in December, I was in hospital for an operation and the head nurse walked in with her team. She pointed at me and said, he is a phacic intraocular. And I sat up in my bed ready to say to her, why are you swearing at me? And then my sister said, she's just referring to your operation, phacic intraocular. It sounds so different when you say the emphasis that way. <laughs> and we do that very often. We refer to people by their illness or by their condition or by their operation, not by their name. I wanted to say, I'm Rama. I'm really scared. I'm really worried. And I'm going to ask you a thousand dumb questions because I want to get back to my life, to my work, to my friends, to my family, to my team and I need to start rehearsing for a TEDx talk in a few months. <laughs> the second story I call The Tale of Two Doctors. A few years ago, I ended up in A&E, and no one knew why. After a battery of tests, the first doctor walked in at midnight. He looked me in the eyes, then looked away, never a good sign, looked very somber, put his hand on, his knee, on my knee, and said, I'm very sorry, but your life as you know it is over. It's that bad, you should not be walking around. Fear, pain, confusion crawled across my mind and absolutely stamped on my soul. I don't remember much of the rest of that night. The next morning, the second doctor walked in. He spent a little bit of time with me. He got to know me, got to know what I was doing, what my aspirations were. And he said to me, your body shut down because of intense pressure, personally, emotionally, professionally. Your body has given up on you, but you don't give up on it. The world needs you. Don't accept your diagnosis. Reclaim your life. Reclaim your life. The warmth and strength of his words still radiate throughout me today. So two doctors, both talented and hardworking, but very, very different because of empathy. I said, sometimes empathy saves the day. That day, it literally turned around my life. This kind of empathy brings me to the final point, clarity, which is at the heart of every design project we do. We humbly seek clarity. An example of this is a project looking at aggression in accident and emergency. Now, we thought that the most aggressive people were the usual suspects, you know, football hooligans, drunken people, belligerent people, but there was another group that could be added to the list, and this was parents. Why? Well, their anxiety levels could rise due to a lack of clarity of where they are in the process, what is being done to the toddler, and why they've been separated from their child and being asked lots of questions. That moment when a parent loses the line of sight with their child is the point when aggression can start with something as simple as anxiety. Another moment of clarity we had was when we were working with care homes. We do a lot of work with neurodiversity, with dementia, with autism, with aging. And we noticed lots of care homes putting white food on a white plate on a white tablecloth, and then complaining that the residents weren't hungry, they weren't eating, they'd given up on life. They just couldn't see the food. <laughs> this was the design solution. Food is rarely blue. So put food on a blue plate. The contrast goes up appetite goes up, and the residents started putting on weight again. They had not given up on life. So I've talked about three things. Creativity, which I learned from being a designer. Empathy, which I learned as a human being. And clarity, which I learned from an ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and, and don't look at me like that. You've all had that relationship. <laughs> Healthcare is fundamental to life, but it can mean different things. Sometimes it's about medication, it's about prescription, or it's about diagnosis. Sometimes it's about watching a sunset, holding a loved one, 
having a glass of wine with a friend, or simply a smile from a stranger. So the next time you see a designer, whatever uniform they're wearing, my humble plea is welcome them in. Design makes everything better. Design is about humanizing healthcare. This is an invitation into my world, the world of design, and I do hope you choose to stay. Thank you. <laughs>